Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the J22 Report. Joining me today will be Rahul from Alt Investors Hangout. He was actually the first person to interview me uh, on a, in a public manner uh, during my investment analysis career and public internet life. So Rahul, thanks for coming on. Wow, I didn't realize that was five years ago, but thanks for having me on, John. You're welcome. Well, it could have been like four. I'm not really too sure. Uh, I just know, I just still remember where it was. I was at, my brother was in Houston, that's where I was, and uh, I remember I was visiting there, so, like, we had to, like, push the interview back, because I was, like, right off a plane, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I thought I pronounced your na- last name wrong, but oh, who, everyone I, I don't remember. <laughs> my last name's so long, and has, like, it's an Italian last name with all... <laughs> <laughs> with so many different, uh, but anyway, I guess my first question is, uh, the techniques you use to analyze markets, can, uh, what type of techniques do you normally use, uh, that you think's important for my audience? Well, I started, uh, looking at the futures markets a few years ago, and one of the things that I picked up with last six to nine months was, what happens in the CFTC reports, the commitment of traders? I'm pretty sure some of your listeners have researched about that, but there are ways to distinguish when may be a good entry. You don't necessarily have to invest in the futures markets, but it could give you a signal when to get in or when to get out. So um, what happens with this commitment of traders report, it shows a few formats. I usually look at the legacy format, And it shows the commercial hedgers and the speculators and the non-reportables. But I'll focus more on the speculators and the commercial money. So the commercial money or the commercial hedgers are basically individuals who are involved in uh, selling a certain asset or commodity, but they're doing it for a living. But what they need to do is they need to hedge themselves in the futures markets to protect themselves from an upside or downside risk. And if you look at uh, these individuals, the commercial money, towards uh, position extremes, they are deemed the smart money. Study after study have shown that these guys know what they're doing. On the other hand, the speculators, the hedge fund guys, they are deemed actually the dumb money. As you can see by the returns, they haven't done so well. The returns are very low at best. If you look at fund after fund after fund, some of these guys do hit a home run. But what I'm trying to say is what I look at is if the commercial money is the most net long um, in history, that may be a good opportunity to follow what they're doing. And if you see the speculators on the other side of the trade, the most net short in history – then you may not want to do what they're doing. And an example is earlier this year, the British pound had the most net long in the British pound ever, going back, I think, at least 20, 25 years. And the British pound was trading at 1.22 at that time. Where did it go up until a few weeks ago? 1.29. So you saw a huge uh, short squeeze by the speculators who had a huge net short position. So What I try to do is I try to look at the position size of smart money versus dumb money. And then I do look at some other technical indicators like Bollinger Bands. In one of my accounts, if people follow what I do on YouTube, I do talk about selling options. And one way of selling options is I look at these Bollinger Bands and I see, okay, where the price is. And I try to make sure that I'm selling out-of-the-money puts or calls way above those bands and if you look at what's happening in the Bollinger Bands 95% of the time you see price action occurring at during those bands yes the bands can expand they can decrease but 95% of the time the prices are in there in that range and it's a two standard deviation move I do look at some relative strength indicators uh, MACD, and also fundamental analysis, which I talk about a lot. I'm actually a proponent of fundamental analysis. But lately, I've been adding some technical analysis to the game, but it's just to look at markets from a balanced point of view, which is 
definitely helped me investing in trading over the last few years. Actually, I got a question speaking of fundamental analysis. Uh, did I actually just started adding technical analysis? or No, technical analysis. That's what I meant to say. Technical analysis after the gold crash because I realized some of my skills were lacking. Uh, was that similar with you with uh, adding technical analysis to your reservoir? Oh, yes, most definitely, because I got a lot of things wrong over the last, what, four to five years. And in this marketplace, which is dominated by algorithms and these robots, you, you need to adapt to that situation. That doesn't mean you give up in analyzing markets. You just need to acquire as many ways to look at markets. And that's why I feel that looking at high probability trades like I do, I sell call spread trades, uh, I also sell uh, puts on the other side, but they're always spread trades. So what I try to do is just look at everything and try to see based on a probability-based perspective in trying to make money. And no one way is going to help you make money. You have to use multiple techniques in order to be successful, in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, when I was analyzing markets, I used one way and I got burned uh... – and so I've added a lot new a lot of new ways to look at the market. So one of the ways, speaking of a new way, is your gold to yen or yen carry trade. Uh, why don't you explain to people listening what that is? All right. So this Japanese uh, central bank keeps interest rates lower than the United States Federal Reserve. And what has developed, long story short, is a carry trade where you start to see individuals you start to see individuals take money and start to throw it in equity start to throw it in real estate and this yen carry trade has worked in the 90s and it has worked since uh, 2011 where you saw the Fukushima earthquake you start to see the yen reverse at that time is short selling so Whenever you start to see the yen starting to sell off, what I've noticed since 2012, 2013 is that the gold prices have been impacted by that. So the yen starts to sell off, the carry trade is on, stock market goes up, the gold price tends to go lower. And we saw a straight line in the Japanese yen going to the downside from 2011 to roughly December of 2015. And ironically, what happened December 2015, the Federal Reserve raised the Fed funds rate 25 basis points. And you started to see the yen carry trade. It didn't totally unwind, but you could see that the yen strengthened at that time. And gold has rallied about 10 to 15% ever since then. I don't have the exact math. But it was 1040, and then right now gold's trading at what, uh, 1212 or something like that. Right so, now, I think it's 1228. Right now, I think it's 1228. Oh, yeah, 1228, yeah. It, it rose the last few days of mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. But, yes, yeah, so, so for whatever reason, some people have their theories behind it. Uh, the individuals on gold money I was reading the other day. They're saying that gold and the yen tend to move together because they react to how negative real interest rates operate. And that's why you're starting to see gold prices rise in 2015, late 2015, and the yen starting to pick up at that time as well. And if you see a crash-like scenario or a hard recession like we saw in 2007, 2008, then that relationship may actually unwind. Because I don't know if many people remember, the yen carry train unwound and the gold price unwound at the same time. Based on what we've seen the past five years, when you see the yen carry trade unwind, gold prices tend to go higher. So I just want to make sure people understand that they don't always have to go in the same direction. It's just if you're having an economy that's slowly moving along like this, I would expect the yen carry trade and gold prices to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. 
Now, my next uh, topic I wanted to get, I wanted to talk about was when I first interviewed you, I still remember this call. Uh, and very few people, I don't think anyone remembers it but me. But in 2012, shortly after the election, or no, not 2012, in 2013, shortly after the gold crash, we were talking about the resumption of the gold bull market. And you said that you don't see a real resumption till. I would say when the Republicans take office and they cut taxes and that will create uh, a new bull market for gold. And that actually looks like to really seem what's happening. You know, in 2015, uh, the re even though the Fed raised rates, uh, 2016, we had a new uh, administration and that was the bottom of uh, gold. And now, you know, even though it's correcting, it doesn't. It doesn't look like gold's probably not going to take off until tax reform really goes through, in my opinion. So what was your reasoning behind it? How, how did you see this from 2013? Well, I just first want to say that there's two ways uh, where gold prices can go higher. Number one, it's through these uh, rate hikes like you saw in 2015. I know a lot of people may not agree with me on that, but that's one way that you could see uh, gold prices go higher. And um, it's just more income flowing uh, to the individuals. But two, if you want to look at uh, tax cuts per se, you remember the Bush tax cuts, right? Bush cut taxes, the economy started flowing, you were in a raising interest rate environment. Gold did pretty well from that time frame. And the same thing I see happening now. I think Trump will have a little tougher time uh, cutting taxes now because what we saw with the firing of James Comey the other day, and he's probably going to fire a few other individuals based on the readings that I've been looking at. But I still think he will get the tax cuts, but it may be in year two, maybe even year three. Re remember, Reagan wasn't able to cut taxes until year three. But the reason why I also saw that you wouldn't see gold prices go up until a Republican administration was that everything was slowly sagging along. But now if you cut taxes and then rates are going up, the economy is going to flow through the whole ecosystem and this will eventually create more inflation than we saw a few years back okay so the next thing i want to ask you about a couple of the markets so i guess we'll stick with gold right now what do you see uh the current state of gold right now well as you know i look at the japanese yen in terms of how it can determine price action and yeah, you could look at technical analysis and follow some of these experts as well. But tying back uh, to my other points regarding the commitment of traders, I'm looking at the Japanese yen composition. And in December of last year, you saw over 100,000 contracts long for the Japanese yen, which was telling us that gold would most likely rise. And it did rise. And a few weeks ago, you saw that number go down to 30,000 contracts long for the yen. And what happened, gold was actually going down. And when I'm talking about long positions, I'm talking about the commercial money. And right now, it's close to around 50,000 contracts, maybe 55,000 contracts long for the commercial hedgers as of May 9th. Because the last data was released on Friday, but it shows it as of Tuesday of that week. So if the trend continues, and I see that the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates, uh, most likely in June, based on all the probabilities coming out, it's like an 80% chance they're going to raise rates. I think they're going to do that, and every time the Federal Reserve has raised rates, right, the commercial money has been very net long. So in terms of gold right now, I know this is a long explanation, um, I think you may see a... Sh short sell-off after this week or the next week up until the Federal Reserve raises rates. And when they raise rates, you're going to see the same thing happen, in my opinion, where you're going to see huge uh, spike up in gold because of the rate hike. 
and I wouldn't be surprised if we're back over 1300 come later this summer based on what I'm looking at the composition of the commitment of traders. But once again, if the commercial money starts to sell the yen aggressively, I will change my outlook. But based on what I'm looking at, it looks like a sell off until June uh, 8th, June 9th, when the Federal Reserve raises rates. But then right after that, it should be that move up higher. So you actually think we could see a move above 1300 this summer? Possibly, not uh, that you're yeah, predicting. Yeah, possibly. It. I mean, there are a few things going on, but if I have to look at the composition of the commercial money, but if they aggressively get long the Japanese yen, like if they're over a hundred thousand contracts, then I wouldn't be surprised to see that. I, I know I'm looking at it from a different angle, but I'm just looking at it perspective of uh, market composition and the rate hikes. I've noticed the last three times they've raised rates, we've seen, or we've seen gold go over a hundred points, 150 points in some regards, and uh, that's one catalyst, in my opinion, for gold prices going higher. The second catalyst will be tax cuts, which we probably will see, but it may be, like I said, in two years. All right. Well, the reason I just brought that, I just asked that because I thought it was funny because uh, in my last video. Uh, I was talking about how, you know, with markets, you know, always expect the unexpected. And all I heard from, like, so many people, especially uh, some people at, like, uh, they used to work at Casey Research, uh, yeah. talking about, like, we're in the summer doldrum and things aren't happening well. So I was like, well, if everyone's thinking that, then gold's probably going to make a move upwards this summer. So I'm actually glad that uh, you said that above 13, because that actually coincided with what I think. It's probably going to go up this summer. <laughs> instead of what everyone believes so right i mean i'm just looking at it i will be willing to change my opinion if i see different data come across but if the trend continues in the yen and the smart money the commercial hedgers keep on buying and if we see a hundred thousand contracts or net long i would be bullish extremely bullish on gold like i'm talking about right now but before we get to that point I do expect the speculators, the hedge fund guys, to sell gold until June 8th, June 9th. But right now, if you look at it from a one-week, two-week perspective, right, we may see a pullback in the stock market where the yen carry trade unwinds, gold goes higher. But then after that, it goes up until June 9th. The market goes up and gold goes down. Yeah, it seems like sell the talk, buy the hike. That's yeah. Sort of like, what is your... Oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, 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 no. Oh, so what was your view? What's your view on the stock market right now? Stock market? Well, it's based on a lot of expectation of what Trump's doing. I think what he did with the executive orders in terms of regulation, where you had to cut three regulations in order to create a regulation, I think that's fantastic. That's really great. Some of the things that I've seen about Trump, it's a bit refreshing compared to the establishment that you see from the Republicans and Democrats. I, I like that about Trump. But in regards to the overall economy, it's not as strong as it should be based on how the stock market is reacting. But you have to remember, just because there is... A discrepancy with the stock market versus the real economy doesn't mean that the stock market won't go higher. But uh, some technical guys that I've been following are indicating that this will go to like 2,500. But once it gets to 2,500, uh, just watch out. You may see a hard correction that not a lot of people are expecting. I mean, for instance, we still have this debt ceiling debacle that we're going to revisit in September. And the fact is that Donald Trump fired Comey, like I mentioned before, may not help his cause with this whole debt ceiling issue. It may not help him with the wall that he wants to build. So I'm just a bit, not cautious, but the, the rally that I see, I still wouldn't be surprised at 2,500, but after that, I'd be very cautious. I do still have some spread positions that are bullish, but... I'm going to be a bit careful probably towards the end of the summer. So right now the VIX is at all-time lows. 
Uh, what's that? Is that telling you anything, or do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I was thinking about it, and Don Harold actually did a video about this, I think, last week, where, yeah, the VIX does seem really low at this point, and everything is very complacent. It's at, a, what, a 10-year low? Yeah, and something like normally that. you would think, oh, what happened 10 years ago? The market crashed a year after that, or a year and a half after that. I'm not saying that it's going to crash like we saw a decade ago, but I'm just saying that it is a red flag in the sense that it's below 10, and during Obama's administration, it never went below 10. And you had, at that time, the yen carry trade on fire, you had QE to affinity, and the VIX can go below 10. And now we've seen it hit below 10 multiple times. So... Is just telling me, yeah, from a 30-day perspective, I don't expect major volatility, major fireworks, but who knows? You may see some geopolitical event that we weren't even thinking about. We may see some conflict go on in Asia, right? There's North mm -hmm. Korea, there's Japan. No one's really talking about that. But what if Trump has a preemptive, excuse me, preemptive strike on? Korea. I hope that we don't get involved in any wars, but who knows? The VIX could fly up to 25 in a heartbeat, to 30. So th I just really don't know how to gauge the VIX just because it's below 10. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's going to crash. I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to crash, but it could be a warning sign that you could see a major volatility hike in the years to come. Yeah, I look at this and, like, when I see the VIX at, like, all-time lows and stock market at highs, it seems like they're trying to price in euphoria. Yeah, for sure. And then the VIX, uh, I use the VIX, actually, on a daily basis. I mean, I, I write options in the futures markets, hedged mostly. And um, the fact is that some of my bullish positions, they're just on fire. And, but, and every time I notice that, my positions are on fire on the bullish side, I always get like slapped in the face for a month or two because I didn't expect volatility spike right back up. Not, I'm not saying that you're going to see a volatility spike in the next month or two, but I'm just saying that every time I see this, my bullish positions just get whacked out of the mold. But I am hedged a lot better than I have been in the past. But that's just something to note for myself. Do you have any p opinion on Bitcoin or like the crypto markets? I know Bitcoin's been on fire. Yeah, it's quite interesting how Bitcoin has been going up and up and up and up. I followed some technical guys and they were saying Bitcoin, when it was like $400, right? I used to not pay attention to it but they were saying yeah buy bitcoin buy bitcoin and what happened to bitcoin it just went up like crazy it went up in a straight line it went over the thousand dollar high that we saw a few years ago it was like 2013 or 2014 bitcoin was on fire and now it's at a point of euphoria and this is where a lot of people get duped in but in terms of why it's going higher I'm exactly not sure. I haven't read too much about Bitcoin. I mean, have you? Do you know why it's going up? Not sure. Like, it depends on who, like, you talk to. I think some people say, you know, of course, you got the old, like, former silver pumper, now the term Bitcoin. Like, to me, that's like a contrarian indicator because, uh, but anyway, they're saying, oh, it's because of uh, decentralization and people are trying to, like, transplant money over, uh... You know, they're trying to, like, get it, like, Chinese and India, they just want to buy money and take it out of their country. That's one thing I heard. One, another thing I heard is just weakening foreign currencies. Uh, Peter Schiff actually thinks it's because of the weak Chinese yen, or the Chinese renminbi. And he thinks this is, like, a really setup, because, like, Peter Schiff's, like, very bullish on Chinese currency, which I don't know, I have no idea why. Uh, I just, like, to me it looks like classic euphoric bubble. Like, it just never doesn't, uh, it just doesn't go down. And, like, that's, like, the most dangerous uh, thing. It seems like the chart, it, like, went straight up. And I'm just like, you know, yeah, maybe... markets we'll... need pullbacks. Yeah. 
Like, maybe it'll go up higher in the future, but I wouldn't buy it. This looks like, uh, right now. I would just want to see at least, like, a 50% correction before I, like, dab into Bitcoin. I mean, I remember the days of Mt. Gox where people used to put all their life savings in Mt. Gox. And ever since I saw that, I'm like, I am, I'm not touching Bitcoin at all. Yeah. There's no way. The weird thing is, it's not just Bitcoin. It's, like, all cryptos are, like, going up. Like, all these, uh... Like, I actually joined one thing called Steam It. Uh, because, like, you get paid to post stuff. Uh, so I'm just, I don't know how much that will last. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just doing it for fun. Like, I'm like, well, you know, if, if I turn out to be, you know, if they turn out to be right, you know, then, you know, I, I found another income, uh, by right. posting stuff. But to me, it looks like, you know, maybe they're starting to do Ponzi schemes because they think cryptos could just will never go up, will never go down. Like, uh, so there are some things that just... This has classic bubble written all over it, but I don't want to trash Bitcoin because, you know, things can go higher or, it, you know, it could just correct and then 10 years from now it'll be much higher. I, you know, I don't want to trash crypto, honestly, because I don't have anything against it. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it, the price increase has anything to deal with the SEC not accepting that uh, Winkle lost twins ETF, but probably not. Yeah. Well, the weird thing about the ETF is the ETF, you you have to pay storage fees. But if you didn't buy the big, if you just bought Bitcoin, you don't have storage fees. But you have like management fees in the ETF. Fees. So I had no idea why Bitcoin would even want an ETF. <laughs> I have no idea. So, well, anyway, I was gonna say that seems to be all that was on the agenda for tonight. So, uh, I guess you can tell people how they can find you. Yeah, just go to YouTube, type in Alt Investors Hangout, and then, yeah, I, I do, try to do videos once a week now, just to tell you what's going on in the marketplace. Yeah, and not only that, I have three channels on uh, featured channels, and his is one of them, so I'm sure there's oh, ways sweet. to find nice. them. So, all right, thanks for coming on, Raul. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right.